So we've had a bit of a, an issue this morning where one of the servers in the server room has died and uh, to sort of fix that we're going to use an identical server to the one that's died and then sort of migrate the data across to that from a backup uh, that we do every day. Uh, so file server, we're going to put server 2012R2 on it, so let's get cracking. So this is the machine that's died, it's a Dell PowerEdge, one new server. As you can see, this has four 1.5 terabyte drives and these have um, these two have failed. One we're going to copy the data to is identical to this server. I'm just going to do a fresh install with server 2012. Um, we're going to have a little look inside this and just to show you what this server has hardware related inside it. Okay, as you can see, this is the front of the unit. It's a one U unit, space for four SATA hard drives rather than SCSI. Okay, let's pull this cover off and have a look inside. So, we are. So it's configured with a RAID card. So rather than using the motherboards on board, RAID, RAID or SATA connectors, which are under here. As you can see there, it's using a card. So there's, here comes the cables to the front. You've got sort of intake fans here. The hard drives go into the front and they're like modular. So as you can see here, you just click them and they pull out. Quite as simple as that. Any faults, it will flash up on the front here. If I take the cover off, sort of cooling cover. Okay, so you can see the intake fans here. You've got one, two, three, four, five, six intake. And under this sort of cooling unit here, we have two Xeon processors. These are quad core processors. As you can see, CPU Norton 1. The airflow points in that direction. We have 74 gig of RAM in this machine. Quite amazing to look at. 74 gig of RAM, an 8 core CPU solution, 650 watt power supply for that as well. So let's get this connected up and reinstall it with Server 2012. Okay then, let's get this thing booted up, it's ready to go, preliminary power is on, let's go ahead now and press the power button and wait for the noise. First things first, we need to configure our RAID array. Okay, so we're going to go into the, the RAID array utility control and R. The drives are now being spun up. You can hear them spinning away. As you can see, all four drives are ready with 1.5 terabytes of storage. I'm going to go ahead and hit F2 on the controller itself and we're going to go down to create a new virtual disk and then we're going to include these disks by selecting where ignore and then pressing the space bar to include those drives as we include them. It populates the storage, four terabytes, 5.5 after NTFS format. And then the next thing we want to do is give it a name. So we want to call it, call it server 2012R2. 2012R2. Let me know the array is called 2012R2. Okay, next thing we want to do is leave these as they are, block settings. Click OK on that. It is recommended that all newly created logs of drives be initialized. Okay, as you can see, there we go. So F2 again. We're going to then initialize this. I'm going to do a fast initialize. It's going to destroy any data. Yes, we know this. So from here, we then reboot the machine, plug our data stick in with 2012R2 or Pixie boot it to MDT and Windows deployment services, and then go ahead and reinstall with a fresh copy of 2012R2. So I'm going to connect my data stick to the front of this machine. As you can see, it's all ready to go. It'll start flashing away where it feels like it. And then we can tell it to boot from that. As you can see there, 74 gig of RAM. Okay, as you can see there, you've got one virtual drive found and handled by the BIOS. 
So it's obviously configured correctly. We now want it to boot from the USB. There you are. So I press the F11 key to select the boot options. So I'll start working away now. There you go. And as you can see, loading files. Okay, we want United Kingdom as our setup install language. Install now. We're going to install 2012 R2 standards with GUI. And set the terms and license agreements. Okay, it's installing now. Come back when it's done. All right, the machine's been put on a static IP. I've reserved it in DHCP. And I'm going to now rename the machine and uh, reboot it. In server manager, so we need to go to local server. And computer name here, as you can see. I'm going to change that to. Okay, okay. It's going to ask us to reboot the machine. Okay, so I've just gone ahead and joined it to our domain here. Uh, restart that, restart now. So I've also enabled remote desktop so we can connect to it from the, the office rather than physically going to the server room to configure changes. And the next step from now is to sort of copy the, the data across to that and obviously then put the um, shares on it afterwards. And then after that we can use AD to point the accounts, the profiles to uh, the shares that we've created and obviously where the files are now going to be. I'm going to go and take it back into the server room, put it back into the rack and then we'll copy the data across to it. So it has 16 threads, it turns out, two Xeon processors, and then like I said, 74 gig of RAM, but it can only use 72 for some reason. <laughs> Okay, at the moment, as you can see, the files are being restored from a backup another server. Now from that server, we're going to migrate the data to this freshly reinstalled server down here, 2012R2. But for obvious reasons, we need a little bit of time to copy the data in the first place and set up that server ready for the data. As a temporary measure, we started to copy the data, not justify myself in that way. And there we go. So I hope you like this video guys, the server's in place, it's ready to be used now and uh, as soon as it's finished we're sort of recovering the files there with uh, Xcopy, we'll move them over again with Xcopy to that machine, that server, 2012R2 server and uh, repoint them in AD. Thanks for watching guys and I'll catch you later, see ya.